what is up youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel girl go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless you a hater girl and then you just ain't got no choice in the matter in the world you just here doing your little hating part girl and it's okay because you provide the world with balance y'all the stuff in the background is gonna start disappearing and we just gonna act like it's not okay because mother is packing early so in the last video i told y'all how my niece tried to come for the way i talk and by the end of the day with me she in her mind felt like she had perfected the way i sound i forgot that I saved the story that I posted to my Instagram. At first she did the little lip pop, but then when I told her to do it again, she added a little extra on there and it was just so funny. You know how to do it now? Yeah. Let's hear it. <laughs> also, if you was on Instagram live with me the other night, girl, we were talking about my skin and how she been acting so good lately. Like she just been on her best behavior lately. And I said to y'all, the next time y'all see me, I'm gonna have a pimple and sure enough, Look at this girl, a mess. I knew it. I would also like to throw in this disclaimer today. Um, I wanna use a white eyeshadow with some bright like spring, maybe summer like colors. I don't have a particular look in my mind, but we just gonna wing it. So this might turn out a mess. We gonna see and we gonna have fun regardless So whatever. I'm also gonna use the Juicy Boost palette, which this girl, <laughs> She real hit and miss, but she has a lot of the colors that I want to use for this look. So we're going to try to use her today. I feel like sometimes I'm trying to blend the colors, girl, and they be trying to get me together. Girl, they be fighting back. I don't like that. I think that's all I have for the church announcements. And so let's just get right into the video. Today we are talking about Catherine Knight. And I know the Tauruses, they feel attacked and all of the things. But girl, I don't want to hear that because y'all ain't heard y'all's people be called down to the altar as much as the rest of us have. So... I know the Geminis are probably shaking in their little, they little shoes. I'm going to let y'all live for a little bit, okay? So without further ado, let's just get into today's video. Now, Miss Catherine Knight was born on October 24th, 1955. May consist of Scorpio, yes. She is one of mine, and that's fine. That's fine because if I haven't proved anything else up until this point, is that all of y'all got issues amongst your folks, okay? And I'm still going to continue to highlight the Capricorns, the Sagittarius, the Aquarius, the Libras, girl. I'm not done with y'all. I just wanted to do this story. And so here we are. Now, this is a little backstory about her little life, like right before it started, which I thought was interesting. But uh, it kind of ain't got nothing to do with nothing. But it's still interesting. Before little Catherine was born, her mother Barbara was married to a man named Jack. And her and Jack, they lived in a little house together in a town called Aberdeen in New South Wales, right? The couple had four sons together before Barbara got pregnant with Catherine. But Catherine's daddy ain't who her daddy's supposed to be because she was not by mother's husband. Barbara was actually having an affair with another little man, another little married man in the town, girl. She had been sneaking and creeping with a man named Ken. Now, Ken also happened to be a friend and a co-worker. To her husband Jack. Just old old school scandal girl. Just messy. Like I said it was a very small town. Probably still is because I don't think towns grow. When news began to spread around town her little affair she received a lot of backlash. A lot of the people they didn't agree with it. They didn't like it and so they started treating her and Ken a certain kind of way. Especially when Barbara decided to leave her husband and go be with Ken. It got so bad that the two decided they were just gonna leave that little town and go somewhere else where don't nobody know they teeth. Now Barbara didn't take any of her four sons with her she left all her kids behind with her ex-husband jack and set off to have her new life with her new man girl in a new town she left all of the things behind she said no ma'am it's a new day now the two older boys they stayed with jack but the younger two were sent to live with an aunt over in sydney barbara and ken got to get barbie and ken oh wow cute barbara and ken got together and they have four more kids of their own including twin girls which catherine was one of those twin girls but in 1959 when catherine was four years old barbara's ex-husband jack he suddenly passes away and so the two sons that were living with him that he had with barbara then came to live with her and her new husband and catherine and all of her siblings Shy, that's a lot of kids that's what what sis saw in this man that made her leave her whole husband and her family behind I don't know because you would think that for her to be having an affair with him it was just this whole romantic like he was this whole Casanova but he was not. He had an alcohol abuse issue and he was a very rude and nasty little drunk. He would regularly sexually assault Barbara like up to 10 times a day and she hated it. Barbara would oftentimes go and tell her daughters about the intimate details of her and Ken's relationship and the abuse and how much she just hated sex and just 
despised being with men. She would tell them all of these things, but then she would also say that as a woman, it is her place to just endure and not complain about it. The children also had to endure the drunken wrath of Ken as well. And so this is what home life looked like for Catherine. And as if that isn't bad enough, she also claims to have suffered sexual abuse at the hands of other family members until the age of 11. Although she says that this did not come from her father. He might have hit her and yelled at her a little bit, but according to her, he never did anything of that nature. Aside from her twin sister, the only person that Catherine was really close to growing up was her uncle Oscar Knight. She thought uncle Oscar was so cool. He was a champion horseman and she really enjoyed watching him in his element but unfortunately when she was just 14 years old he decided to take his own life and this really really devastated Catherine like she really took it hard. After his passing Catherine maintained that he continued to visit her regularly and this is something that she claims that he did throughout her entire life. She would talk to him often. She felt his presence and so she held on to that. By the time Catherine reached high school, she was very much a recluse. She was a loner, sis so didn't want to socialize or be involved with any of any of the things involving any of the other children. Now, although she liked to stay by herself, she by no means was a weak child. Not at all. She was not bullied either. Sis, in fact, was the bully. She towered over the other children and she used her size. She would have these overly dramatic emotional responses to a lot of the things resulting in fights. One instance, sis brought a knife to school and pulled it out on another child and the teacher had to just square up with sis and intervene. She had to go in and try to fight Catherine like Catherine was her size. Girl, that palette, I just I be trying to can, but I can't. I honestly cannot. We are starting over with the eyes. But anywho, back to the story. The teacher received some backlash about, you know, squaring up with a student the way that she did. But it was ultimately decided that she had only done so in self-defense because she had attempted to break up the fight because this was getting a little dangerous with the blade. And then, of course, Miss Mamas came at her and she just had to do what she had to do. Now, not long after this incident, Catherine decides at age 15 that she's gonna just drop out after school. And what's really sad is the fact that at this age, she still had not learned to read or write. And considering how bad her home life was and things that were going on, like that's just, it's extremely sad. It really is. From there, she decides to just, you know, go try to get a job, earn some money, and do things a little differently. Now, first she gets a job as a cutter in a fabric store and the job was okay, but she thought it was really boring. And then she decided that that was something that she would love to do instead. Her dream job was removing the inner organs of animals at a slaughterhouse. This is what she said she wanted to do. This was her dream, her highest goal. She left home in pursuit of her dream and actually found a job doing so. And she was really good at it. Like she was really into it. She loved it. She performed well. She was actually the only woman there at her job. And even the men were disturbed a little bit by how much she enjoyed it. Like for them, they weren't squeamish. It did not bother them doing the job, but Catherine loved the job. She was a little different. Catherine would actually sit on her lunch break and eat and watch the other animals be slaughtered. Like she just, sis was strange. The guys thought it was so weird that her appetite was not interrupted by this at all that sis appeared to delight in the animal suffering. They were a little afraid of Miss Mamas. They was like, you know what? Something ain't right with sis. As much as they feared her and thought that she was weird, they actually respected her craft because she was the quickest, the most efficient, especially in boning, and she can do hundreds of animals in a day. Now, as a reward for her skills and dedication to the job, she was rewarded a big butcher's knife set, these fancy sharp knives. She goes home, hangs them over her bed so that they would always be handy if she ever needed them. And this is something she did throughout her entire life. Wherever she moved, she hung these knives over her bed, everywhere. Like, girl, what if one of them fell in the middle of the night? There you go. That's what I be thinking. What if the bed rocks, girl? Because, you know, I'm a wild sleeper. Now, what if I get to tossing and turning, girl, and then, bam, one of the knives just right there just falls into my little cranium. And then next thing you know, I don't see the morning. Like, I can't. I couldn't do it. Now, in 1973, the guys get a new co-worker down to the job by the name of David Kelly. David was also a friend of her brother's. And so he got to, you know, spend a little extra time with Catherine outside of work. And he liked her. This had garnered a little reputation of 
being ready to fight at all times. If she felt crossed or disrespected or slighted in the slightest degree, she was ready to throw hands and feet at any given moment, anywhere, anytime, any place. like Jenny, Jenny Jackson. He actually loved this about her. He thought it was charming especially since she was also ready to fight for him as well girl you weren't gonna disrespect her or her man period he appreciated this david thought it was sassy 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 now david actually had a few stolen moments with Catherine's own twin sister he also had a nasty little alcohol problem but she loved him anyway she didn't mind despite this the two fall for each other they fall hard and fast for one another. And within a year of meeting, Catherine suggested David that, you know, maybe you should marry me. He agrees. He's like, okay, cool. She also suggested they show up to their wedding ceremony on a motorcycle because she thought that would be cool. And he was like, okay, that's fine too. And they do so, but they arrive. He pulls up with her on her back and he is however many sheets to the wind, girl. He is inebriated. David is smacked. All right. He barely knows what's going on. Now at their little wedding ceremony, Barbara, Catherine's mother, pulls David to the side and she is like, you know, congratulations or whatever, but I got to warn you about this one here. You better watch her or she will effing kill you. Stir her the wrong way or do the wrong thing and you are a dead man pretty much. She tells David that she loves her daughter, but she definitely has a screw a screw loose somewhere and David is just like well okay noted whether or not he believed Miss Mama's we don't know but he definitely got to see that she was not lying on the very first night of their their marriage on their actual wedding night he is waking up out of his sleep by Catherine on top of him with her little hands around his neck just trying to take him clean up out of here I'm like girl you didn't messed up already when he pushes her off and asks her what is she doing she apologizes and she explains it as just you know what I did get a little a little upset, but you only gave me three rounds and then you decide you're going to go to sleep after three. And so that is the reason why she tried to just take him on up out of here. So I'm sure you can imagine that their uh, marriage wasn't a particularly happy one. If something like that could send her over the rails and be ready to, you know, send him to the upper room. Sis definitely had a couple of screws loose. Catherine was very vindictive, very jealous, very violent. She was just like a father just like her daddy and not even pregnancy or motherhood soft and little Catherine. Sis was out here full-blown pregnant still throwing hands and feet. At the very end of her pregnancy she had gotten upset with David and pulled a whole Bernadine from waiting to exhale. She chopped up all of his clothes, shoes, and she burned them and she also hit him over the back of the head with a frying pan and this was just after a little argument where David pretty much just refused to back down. So she's like, you know what? That'll teach him. Now, after she did all of this and then smacked him over the head, girl, with a frying pan, he was terrified. He leaves the house, runs to the neighbors, and he makes it there just before he passes out because he had a whole fractured skull out here. By the time he comes to to give his side of the story, she had already played her expected mother card with the police and kind of just told them like, uh, but they still weren't trying to hear it. They told him that he needed to press charges against her. However, she is a able to make him feel too bad about her being so far along in her pregnancy to continue with the charges and press charges like the police advised him to and so he does not. Three years into their marriage and right after the birth of their daughter David finally decided you know what I'm sick of Catherine and all of her shenanigans like baby or not I'm out of here I can't continue to do this with you girl. So he decides to leave her and that baby and go off with another woman. Catherine was devastated and heartbroken, but in true Scorpio fashion, girl, I gotta, I gotta be honest. She decides to express her hurt through anger and she was pissed, but she decided to express said anger in the wrong way. She took it out on little baby Melissa. The day after David took off with his woman, she puts little baby Melissa in a stroller, girl. She decides to go on a walk. On this walk, she is violently rocking the stroller, girl, swinging the stroller all around. From side to side slamming it against the walls she's slamming it up against railings just any kind of little fixtures alongside the street that she walked up against girl she just slinging the stroller against it fences buildings fire hydrants just whatever she can she is knocking the stroller up against just terrible why would you do such a thing somebody calls the police we know it ain't no damn apple store employee but somebody dials the police thankfully when they see her out here just doing all of this to this little sweet innocent baby the police come out they pick this up and take her to the hospital girl because obviously something ain't right upstairs and she is found to be suffering with 
postpartum depression. At least that's what made sense to the doctors. That's the only way they could justify what she was out here doing. I'm gonna try to use this white because I think this is the only palette that I own that has white. We just gonna pray. Catherine is released after having to spend a couple of weeks inside the hospital. But it was very apparent right away that these weeks didn't do much at all. Really anything at all. Literally the day after she is released from the hospital, she takes two month old baby Melissa. Why would they give this child back to this woman? I don't know. Polo Melissa, she just took her down through there. Rough little start to life. She takes Melissa down to a railroad, places the baby directly on the tracks and leaves her there to be run over. She doesn't even stop there. From there she goes and steals an axe and then she goes into town and threatens the lives of just random people out there minding their business and trying to enjoy their day. Meanwhile back at the train station or train tracks Melissa is found and picked up literally minutes before a train came through. Somebody realized that there was a baby out there on the tracks and ran out and got her. Catherine is arrested and taken right back down to that same hospital but she is allowed to sign herself out the very next day. A couple of days after she checks herself out of the hospital, she goes home, retrieves her little knives, the ones that she had been waiting to use her whole life. She gets one, finds a woman with a car and slashes her across the face, then demands that she give her a ride down to where David is with his new woman. This didn't have her own car and this was before the Lyft and Uber days. Probably was banned from the train station at this point so sis felt like this was her only option. The woman manages to actually escape Catherine without giving her a ride but this just pisses Catherine off even further. She then sets eyes on a little boy and decides to take him as a hostage. When the police arrive they are able to subdue her and get the little boy out of her you know her grips. He was completely un unharmed during the whole ordeal. This time they take her to a different hospital and she gets there and she just openly tells the staff that her plan was to go where David was, take his life and his mother's life, and then circle back and get the mechanic that had fixed his car right before he left because she felt like him fixing the car enabled David to just ride on out of her life. She was like, you know what? He wouldn't have been able to do it without your involvement. So now you have to go down with the rest. Now, I don't know if Miss David had some screws loose of his own because hearing this, I would want to get away from you as far away from you as humanly possible. But guess who are the ones that go pick her up from the hospital when she is released? Him and his mother. They check her out of the hospital and he decides to give love another try. They pick this up and they move with her to Brisbane. Once there, they have a second child together, another daughter, and they remain together for another four years before Catherine now decides, you know what? This relationship, like, sir, being with you wasn't even worth all of that in the first place. This is, this wasn't even worth it. I'm done now. I'm the one that's pulling the plug. She then breaks up with David and leaves him and takes her two kids with her. From there, she moves in with her parents for just a little while. They help her get on her feet, take care of her kids. She gets her job back down to the slaughterhouse, which she had actually left after marrying David. Unfortunately for her though, she only works a year at the slaughterhouse before she suffers a back injury that prevents her from being able to continue to work there. She is placed on disability. The government also provides her a place to live free of charge girl with her and her children because you know, she's unable to work. She needed the assistance. In 1986, just a couple of years later, she meets herself another David to replace the first one, David Saunders. He was a miner that made pretty good money and the two fell in love hard and fast girl. They had a whole whirlwind romance and within months of meeting each other, she moves him in with her and her two daughters. Now David told her that he wanted to keep his own apartment just in case he wanted to have somewhere to go and clear his mind or be alone or just in case the two did not work out, but she did not agree with this. She was just convinced that he was gonna use this apartment to take his other women. She was already really insecure. This only further fueled her jealousy. She never agreed with this, but he did not back down. He wanted to keep his apartment. The couple's relationship, it goes downhill fast after this. She was constantly accusing him of taking other women there. She just did not trust it. It never sat well with her spirit. He was constantly trying to convince her that he was committed to her in this relationship and that he was not up to no good. The two of them would fight about it all the time and things really escalate when one day Catherine takes his little puppy, his two month old puppy, and slits the dog's throat right in front of him. 
staring him right in the eyes like this could be you. He was mortified, but he still decides to stay with sis. She was his woman and he was gonna stick beside her, apparently. She actually becomes pregnant by him shortly after this with her third daughter. The two of them welcome their baby girl. After welcoming their baby girl, the two of them decide that they want to get a house together where they can live comfortably with their now three girls. Things were all good until Catherine decided she wanted to be the one to decorate. Catherine wanted taxidermy everywhere. She wanted animal skins and, and hooves and teeth and talons all over the place. She decked it out with skulls and pitchforks. Just all of the disturbing things. He thought this was weird, but he was like, you know what? I'm just gonna let sis have it because I ain't got time. By now he learned that it was better to just let her do her if he was gonna stay with her. Because fighting with her just didn't get him anywhere. It could very well land him six feet under, so, you know, he would back down. Sometimes, though, Catherine would still manage to get underneath his skin. And the two of them would have this explosive argument. During one of these moments, Catherine gets so upset that she just hauls off and hits the man, smacks him with an iron. And if that isn't bad enough or dramatic enough, she takes a pair of scissors and just lodges them into him, just right into the man. In the moment, he decided that this was just too much. He was going to leave her for good and he, he dips. He leaves without taking anything. But once he cools down and decides to return, he finds that she has pulled another way in the exhale moment and chopped up all of his belongings, cut up all of his clothes and shoes. When this happens, he said, you know what? I did the right thing. I'm only going to come back here from now to visit my daughter. At this point, that's the only thing he had at the house that was not destroyed. Well, not physically destroyed. Sis probably was going through all kind of little mental and emotional turmoils. When Catherine realizes that her man is not coming back, he is gone and never coming back for real, she decides to move on. I really tried to make this white work, but it just looks too bad. And so what we gonna do is make another turn. I did a green look with that palette and I loved it, but I guess that's the only two colors worth two dead flies smashed in the whole thing. Now Catherine decides she is ready to move on to her next, depending on how you look at it, it could be her next love interest child or her next victim. It really could be described as either one at this point. She gets herself a nice older man, a 43 year old man by the name of John Chillingworth. At this time, she is currently 35 years old. So he's a little older, but he's not like like her grandfather's age older during her relationship with john she becomes pregnant with her first ever son a boy that she names john jr and their relationship seemed very different from the rest there wasn't a bunch of fighting arguing a bunch of toxicity none of the things it just seemed to be coasting really smoothly she appeared to be acting right just not up to any of her typical shenanigans that is until john discovers three years into their relationship that she had been cheating on him for most of it with another man by the name of john price I don't know why she does these names back to back like this. She went David to David, then John to John. After he finds out that she was cheating, he decides to call it quits. And she goes off to be with John full time. You know, that was her little part time love. She upgraded his membership and subscription to a full time love. This relationship, just like the previous one, it starts out pretty good too. None of the arguments, none of the fighting and toxicity. It's just coasting along without all of the extras. And in 1995, the two of them decide that they are going to get a house together. He's also a parent. He has two children. I could not confirm the ages of his kids, but I believe they were teenagers. They were definitely older than her children. John Price was well aware of her reputation around town as being like a hothead and, you know, that she liked to turn up in her relationship relationships and get a little wild and crazy. He basically knew that she was a few cards short of a full deck, but he wanted to deal anyway. She hadn't shown him anything that he couldn't handle. She got along well with his children. He bonded with her children as well. And so everything just appeared that it would be great. He didn't foresee any issues with her. Catherine is also enjoying the relationship and she sees a future with John, one that will last forever. So she decides that she is going to, just like her very first marriage, propose to him, tell him that you know maybe you should ask me to marry you like maybe we should just go ahead and make this thing official and john is like um maybe sometime in the future but at this present moment no he declines and this pisses miss catherine off she does not take well to this rejection whatsoever however she does not decide that she's gonna blow up just yet she was like maybe i should just take a different avenue you see john worked as a minor he made pretty good money like they had no money issues whatsoever he he brought in the coins she takes money from him and then goes and buys herself this nice engagement ring and goes back to him like, hey, what about now? He's like, girl, no. 
She thought that if she just showed him the ring, she probably could convince him to go ahead and proceed with the marriage. He is still not convinced that, you know, marriage is a good idea right now. He declines again. And she is, of course, she is pissed because she's like, okay, now I gave you a chance. I gave you another chance to get it right and you haven't. So here we go. She resorts to a little old fashioned Catherine shenanigans. He had told her before in the past that at his job, they threw away the old first aid kits when they were expired and that he would take them from the trash. Now, I don't know if he was keeping them or if he was selling them, but regardless of them being pretty much tossed out and discarded by the company, him taking them would still be considered stealing. And she knew that. So she calls up to his job and drops the little bomb, just gives them the tea. And it's like, hey, he steals. This is what he steals. Watch out. Like, go on and toss one in the trash and see what he does. So now after being on this job 17 whole years, he is fired for stealing from the company. He dumps Catherine after this, as he should have. Rightfully so. But then they end up getting right back together a couple of months later, child, as they shouldn't. I say, oh Lord. From there, there is just a lot of drama and turmoil within their relationship. And it began to trickle down to the kids. She started to argue and fight with his kids all the time. And it was just a whole toxic mess. She even began to lie on John and spread rumors also about his son that were not true. That they were inappropriately touching her son and her kids. And it was just, it was a bad situation. Now on February 9th, 2000, things really escalate between the two during an argument. And she pulls out a knife and she stabs John. And at this point, he's like, you know what? This is... This is just too much. John goes to the police and he attempts to get a protective order against Catherine. He is like, you know what? You got to leave my house. He also tells his friends and neighbors that if something happens to him, like she is the one that has done it. When he goes to the police station, though, they tell him that the restraining order request could take several weeks to fulfill. It was not something that could go into effect right away. Now, by this time, he had gotten himself a new job and after being told that his order of protection could take weeks to process. He establishes a routine with his neighbors. He tells them that in the mornings he will check in with them and before he goes to bed at night, he would check in with them as well. The very same day that he had attempted to get the order of protection, he comes home, he checks in with the neighbors to let them know, you know, everything is fine. I'm just about to go home and go to bed. His kids were not at home this night. They were spending the night somewhere else. He has his dinner, he winds down and he prepares for bed. Now, meanwhile, Catherine, crazy Catherine, has come into the house. She has snuck into the home. She has prepared herself a little meal. She watched some television, all while John is upstairs sleeping soundly. And then she decides to go upstairs and make her presence known. What she does, he of course is very much alarmed about her presence, but she tells him, you know, I'm not here to start trouble. She convinces him that she is just there to make up. And so the two have a little adult exchange and then he goes back to sleep. Now little does John know, Catherine had a completely different plan in mind for the night and she had brought along one of her most prized possessions one of her sharpest knives to carry out this plan as John is laying peacefully sound asleep in his bed she reaches over into her bag grabs her knife and plunges it right into him he immediately jumps up in reaction to the pain and just He's horrified at what she's done. He tries to get away from her, but she was one swift, fast woman. She goes after him and she gets him another 37 times. This was just the beginning of what she had planned. And when I tell you it is sick, I think this is the most horrific thing I have ever heard in all the cases that I've done, even the ones that I know about. I think this takes the cake for sure. Putting her impeccable butchering skills to work she removes his skin with surgical precision. Then she goes and hangs it from one of the hooks that were in the living room, just used as decor. She takes his head, puts it in a stock pot along with vegetables and broth and puts it on a low simmer. And then other parts of him, she prepares a steak and she also cooks more vegetables to go alongside it. She made pumpkin, zucchini, there was squash, there were beets, like all these different nasty vegetables. She prepares and size for what? she made appear to be steak right it gets worse she sets the table fixes two plates and she puts out name cards like she was having a fancy dinner party with his two children's names who she expected to arrive later and she planned to feed him to them like a steak dinner like literally how crazy do you have to be is that not the sickest thing you have heard in your life 
the sickest thing I done heard in my little life. She then proceeds to set the table up like it's a nice dinner party for two that's about to go on. She puts John's favorite chair at the head of the table and then she takes the rest of him and props him up in that chair and crosses the legs just as a nasty twisted little finishing touch. That was the third plate made and um, this plate was found tossed in the backyard. Investigators assumed that she had attempted to consume one of the meals on her own but maybe she got sick or just decided you know I can't finish it and she just tossed it in the backyard. Who knows at this point because this is nuts obviously. Now whether or not this was a last minute decision or if she had planned to do this all along we don't know but she takes an entire bottle of pills and then she just lays down on the floor beside the chair that she had propped john up in and passes out sis is pissed when she wakes up and she is in a hospital room child still in the land of the living she just knew she was about to wake up at the pearly gates of heaven girl and just try to weasel her way in just try to finesse but instead she was still here now luckily the children they had never made it to the house to make the grisly discovery that she had set up for them they'd actually spent the night away from home the following morning after she had done all of this crazy mess his neighbor noticed that his car was in the driveway you know they had set up the schedule to where he would check in every day before he went to work and after he got home but when they noticed like hey he didn't check in and his car is still sitting there and it's past time for work they go over to his house, but they see blood on the doorknob. And so they like, you know what? I'm not going in there. I'm calling the police instead. When the police come out, they go inside and they see what had happened. Now, when she wakes up, she decides it's probably best for her to just pretend like she don't remember anything. So that's what she does. She pretends that she has no recollection of the night whatsoever. Sis came too, and she tried to use the good old what happened defense girl and they were not trying to hear it she thought that when she woke up pretending like she didn't remember anything surely they were just gonna take her back down to that little hospital and she could just figure out the rest from there but that is not what happened they take her to jail they press charges and they also give her a trial date during this entire ordeal she is maintaining that she doesn't remember anything like nothing she goes from that to a guilty plea she just decides you know what never mind i'm just gonna plead guilty just girl i did it Take me to jail, lock me up, throw away the key. I love this foundation so much. This is one of my favorites. She's a little pricey, but she's good to me. After seeing how the Armani did me, I said, you know what? I'm going to pay to be treated right. So I'm just going to go back to her. For the terrible, grotesque, and horrific things that Miss Catherine Knight did, she is sentenced to life in prison. And I looked at the pictures of the jail, the particular one that she is in, and the prison cells are a hell of a lot better than the ones that I have seen from over here in other countries. I'm like, Australia, girl, y'all giving out dorm rooms, actually. Dorm rooms and free meals. That does not look like any cell that I've ever seen. That is a dorm room. She's living better than some kids in college because they don't even get that amount of space. Hell, it looks like sis can receive Amazon packages there. Just straight to her cell, just right there. Now they say sis spends her days inside her little cell crocheting and knitting, painting and writing and all of the things artistic. And then she doesn't really cause any problems in jail. She never really has. She kind of is a little too old for the for the foolishness right now but you know what they say girl young fools just grow to be old fools age ain't nothing but a number instead of causing any trouble she is actually allegedly the peacemaker she has like this grandmotherly persona in prison people call her nana even though they know of the horrific things that she's done all of her friends and family on the outside including her children have abandoned her they want nothing to do with her they don't want her name attached to theirs in any kind of way they not sending sis letters none of the things so i don't know what she writing or who she writing to maybe she got her little man who knows but they have completely disowned her and so yeah she's now a little older lady living out her little peaceful days behind bars and knitting and because I didn't have to start over with my eyes, I'm behind on my makeup. Now, I plan on this being Tuesday's video, but I also plan because I'm stockpiling videos like to completion, not just doing the research, like filming, editing them down to done. OK, when I move, I'm not trying to have to move and try to keep up with an upload schedule. And I said I plan for this to be Tuesday's video, but I don't know, because with this whole stockpiling thing in the coming weeks, I'm going to allow the girls over on Instagram to vote for the next upload. Everything is going to get uploaded, but I'm just going to give y'all some options like, girl, for Tuesday, do y'all want this or this? Y'all want this, this or this? Which one? I ain't going to lie. I was not here for Pam McGrath and her concealer when I first bought it forever ago when it first launched. But today is kind of cute. I'm still not a fan of the foundation though i'm sorry i am starving y'all yesterday was the first day that i really 
put in a lot of effort into my moving. Like I was packing up stuff in my little car that I did not want and discarding her down to the dumpster. I gave away my little smoker. Can't be smoking nothing on the patio where I'm moving. And so one of the maintenance guys in my neighborhood who's worked here, I've been here five years and he has worked here. I think the whole time I've been here, but he's always been really, really nice. And I bought this really nice smoker and I loved it. It worked so good, but I only used it a couple of times and he would always talk about how much he liked it. So mostly everything that I'm not taking with me, I am selling, but I decided I'm just going to gift it to him. So I rolled down on him. Well, me and Blue walked down on him. Told him I was moving and he is more than welcome to come by and get it anytime. Charlie hopped on a go-kart damn near beat me and blew back to the house. We were on a little walk. And I'm like, all right, so I did say anytime. So I guess, come on in. I really honestly don't even want to go through the hustle of having to sell things. Like post it online and have strangers show up to my house, girl, and come inside. Like I'm not even into all of that. So I don't know. I'm gonna figure it out. I can donate it to like the Salvation Army. I might do that and call them girls to come out. I honestly really don't even care about making money off the stuff. I just want it out with as least pain as possible. Girl, I might get out there like Bernadine on Wait Next Hell Girl, me and Blue, and just sell everything for a dollar. All right, y'all, that is pretty much it for today's video and this crazy, crazy woman in her life. As always, I can't wait to see what y'all got to say about this. Leave your comments down below letting me know your thoughts. And do not forget to leave, girl, without giving the video a thumbs up please. As always, I appreciate you so much for spending time with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Unless it's your first time here, then girl, just welcome to my channel. Go ahead and hit the It's too early for this. I also want to throw in this the pack last minute. I'm not going to spend the last week of my life or the couple days of my life. Girl, what are you talking about? Days of your life. I really spend an hour to a day here and there doing it. Ugh, that sounds nasty. <laughs> I wasn't talking about it like that. I'd rather spend an hour or two a day doing it slowly. That still don't sound right. Jesus. Like Jesus, like, girl, don't call me. Barbara's ex huds it. Catherine was like, ah. Something in my heart is telling me to put that palette down and do not keep going because it's going to be a disaster. These colors do not layer well on top of each other, and I know this. Every time I use that palette, I just end up frustrated and I ain't got time today. I'm asking for trouble. I said, girl, leave me alone. Leave me alone. All right, so I had to, I had to, I had, I did. If she felt crossed or disrespected, this well, the whole Bernadine from Set It Off. Not Bern, not Set It Off, girl. Oh, not put it all in my hair, girl. Oh my God. I am starving. Y'all, sh yeah. I think I might donate it. I can donate it to like, I can donate it to like the Salvation Army. I might do that.